Hello again everyone, my name's Postman Politics, welcome back to Ryan McC... That's not right. My name's Ryan McCavan, welcome back to Postman Politics. On today's episode, I do my job. I'm delivering all over today, but I'm in East Street right now. Anyone that lives in Bristol will know this street. It's notorious for being East Street. Um, I got my bike stolen on this street <laughs> on one of the like first weeks that I moved to Bristol. It wasn't good. I went into the butchers back over there. I walk in, usually when I go into a shop and I've got my bike or I've got my scooter, I'll bring it in with me, but it's such a tiny little shop that I just, I literally walked in, put it outside the door, 20 seconds talking to the guy. I was just like, I'm just gonna bring my bike in because I'm just a bit scared. Honestly, it was in there for about 20, 30 seconds. I walk out and there's a geezer already on my bike and he's already like a bit too far ahead. I shouted at him, I was like, oi, what are you doing? And then just sprinted after him. But he was already going, that's the thing. I grabbed the seat. But if you picture it, yeah, if you think, if I've grabbed the seat, that means it's mine, it isn't. Like, I thought that was mine, but he was already pedaling. And because he's a little crackhead knob, he just like tried to get away as fast as he could. And as I'm grabbing the seat, he's like pedaling away and he just it slipped out of my grip. I went into full on 100 meter sprint on sports day rowing mode. <laughs> And I ran down the whole street, like all the way to here, which is quite far from the butchers. He turned around the corner over there and I just, I couldn't be like shouting at him because I was running. I was just, and he was getting further and further away from me. And I was just like, it's gone. I just had to say goodbye. Like as I saw him riding away, I was like, I have literally full on sprinted there and he is getting away from me. And I just had to say goodbye to it. I've had that bike since I was really young. It was, um, it was really annoying. Uh, I get over things like that pretty quickly, I can't lie, because it was completely my fault and I can get another one, but it's like the memories that you have of that bike. I used to like ride around with my mates like all the time. I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving in my van. It's a tiny little van. It is really small, this van, but I kind of like it because I can whip, 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 whip around like a little go-kart. Yes, boys and girls. How are we doing though, YouTube? Are we all all right? Like, guys doing well my seatbelt is on you liar yeah how are we all doing we all good we all good it's right the camera's just propped up i'm not filming myself well i am filming myself i'm just not using my arm it's propped up don't you worry don't you worry little cotton socks everyone listening at home you might not be at home you might be in your car wherever you are i'm gonna spit these bars um yeah no <laughs> none of that made sense but I guess when I say how you are, I'm not ever gonna get a response in it because you're not actually right next to me. But I like to say how you are because then you can at least respond wherever you are and then you just, you know, we're all friends. Let me take you on a trip down memory lane when I was working jobs that weren't as good as this one. I was about 18, my first ever job. <laughs> And it was the worst job I think I've ever had. I was there for a month and then I left because it was that bad. I was working at Waitrose in the warehouse. But what I signed up for, yeah, because they say that in the interview, is like jot down the times that you prefer and then we'll try and get them as best as we can. Most people got the times that they wanted to get. Oh, I didn't. I think they just completely messed it up and then I couldn't change it, which was just fantastic. Thank you for doing that. It really made my life easier. Basically what they did was, I put in I want to work mornings and I want to be in ambient. So you've got ambient, chilled and frozen. I think most people know what that is. It's just like <clears throat> room temperature, chilled and then fucking freezing. <laughs> they put me on nights in the freezer. So the complete opposite of what I wanted. Literally the complete opposite. And I was just, I needed a job and I needed the money. So I was just like, yeah, I'll try it out. Other people in my life was like, just get another job. Like, why are you doing that? And I was like, do you know what? I stay up quite late and it, it would be kind of nice to know that everyone's going to work when I'm coming back from work. But what I didn't factor in was that I'm gonna have to go to work when everyone else has finished work and actually going to bed, <laughs> which is one of the worst feelings, not ever, but like, it's just, it's a pretty bad feeling to 10 p.m. be chilling with my mates and then, or like 9 p.m. be chilling with my mates and then come 10 p.m. I've got to go to work and they're all going home. And I did it in winter. You ask me why? I don't know. I don't know, I was 18, I just wanted some money. I didn't know like, 
<laughs> that that would be absolutely the worst decision of my life. So yeah, just, just picture me walking in on the first day. It's minus six in there, I'm pretty sure. It was a long time ago, but it was it was minus, it was definitely more than like minus two or minus three. Because I'm in the freezer. And you just... <sighs> Do you know? <laughs> that pause of silence, yeah, was me actually remembering what it felt like. It was the most depressing place I've ever been in in my life. All the older people there that had been there for ages were saying, what are you doing? Oh, they'd literally look at me and be like, why are you here? And I was just like, why am I here? And they were like, you're way too young and smart for this, mate. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I just would pause and be like, I actually don't know what I'm doing. Why am I here? And then I obviously left pretty quickly. And it was just such heavy things that I was pushing. It was so taxing. And there was a, in the warehouse, there was a massive clock with red numbers. So you'd know what the time is all the time. It would be impossible to not look at the time. So I'd be like, oh, please tell me, like, at least half an hour has gone and, like, one minute had gone. <laughs> it was just, like, the worst feeling in the world. But, um, yeah, it was a good life lesson because it was absolutely awful. And putting myself in that position where I have to do it just makes everything easier. Like, if I have a bad day here, oh, it just doesn't compare. Like, I've got loads of other stories from other jobs that I'll delve into, but that's, like, the beginning, really. Like, that was the first job I had and... It was tough, it was real tough, but it's made me tough. Mm! And I guess the moral of that story is to make sure that you do things that really scare the hell out of you and make you just second guess it and go, can I actually achieve that? Is that gonna be too difficult to do? And if you do it, I guarantee you, I can almost guarantee you, you'll do it and you'll be like, oh, that wasn't that bad and if it is that bad you did it anyway you know and that's a big achievement it makes all of the mundane tasks and the simple things that you get stressed out about not stressful because you know what true stress really feels like wisdom with rowan cool isn't that sun just absolutely lovely on the eyes that's amazing you've got to really take it in because we don't get a lot of sun in England. I don't know about you guys that live in other countries, but sun isn't very common around here. A lot of rain is, a lot of clouds. Sun isn't very common, but it's nice when it comes out because you're not used to it, so. You just love it, man. Oh my God, that is amazing. Lord, shine your wisdom upon me. Look at this absolutely stonking sandwich though. If you're ever in Bristol and you're on North Street, hit up Dio's Deli. It's so good, the way they just structure their sandwiches. <laughs> sound like a goon, but <laughs> so the layers are just fantastic. This one's chicken thighs, bit of turmeric, red cabbage, lettuce, bit of mayo. Great bread as well, really nice in there. 6 50 per sandwich, it's £8 for the beef one. That ain't even, that, that ain't even that bad. No beeping today, thank the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for not making the van beep. Jesus, helly, God, you mad, that was annoying. But yeah, guys and girls, and animals, whatever you are, whatever you identify as, fucking penguin nowadays, isn't it? That concludes the episode. I hope you enjoyed. Not much else to say. I love you all. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good day if you're starting it. Whatever you're doing, have a good time. Goodbye.